Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study, and we're so glad you could join us. But before we get into the Word, let us take a moment in praying. Lord, we just thank you for being in our lives, Lord. We just thank you that you're always with us, Lord, wherever we go, Lord, and that we can always discuss with you, Lord, what we have on our minds, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that we have an intimate relationship with you, Lord, and that we can speak to you about anything, Lord, and that you will answer us, Lord. And Lord, I also just thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit as well, Lord, to lead us in all situations. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. almighty name we pray, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us as we continue our study of the Word in the book of Acts. And this morning, we are moving on to chapter 28. So, we are going to cover the first 16 verses. And with that, could I get a volunteer to read that section of Scripture, please? I will. All right, promise. Now, when they escaped, they found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome, because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened to his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice is not allowed to live. But he shook off this creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up swell up, or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In that region, there is an estate of the leading citizen in the island whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dynasty. Paul went up to him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. They also honored us in many ways, and we departed. They provided such things as were necessary. Mm -hmm. Through 16, sir. Oh, I actually didn't close my Bible. Oh, okay. Would you like me to continue? You can continue. After three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers who had wintered at the island. And landing at Circos, we stayed three days. From there, we circled round and reached Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and the next day, we came to Putoli, where we found brethren and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so we went towards Rome. And from there, when the brethren heard about us, they came and met us as far as Appi Forum in three inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Now when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered their prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. Amen. Amen. So we're led to read that section of scripture because it covers the full or the remainder of the journey in its fullness. So we're going to discuss that before mm -hmm. we get into Paul's ministry in Rome or where the Lord told him from the beginning that he was going to go, mm -hmm. or the beginning of this journey. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open the floor at this time to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you, and to ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? I will. I just want to, before you go, LaCharles, um, I just want to clear up in verse 8, um, the father of Publius had dysentery, oh. which is a gastrointestinal um, problem where they bleed and have diarrhea. So just, just to make that clear, the visual, so we can track what, what was going on. He was ill and that is not a friendly, um, issue that he had. So go ahead with Charles. <laughs> well, what the Lord was speaking to me about was that we have, we have been talking about how the enemy has been trying to stop Paul all the while. Mm -hmm. um, we see with the tempest, that was not the Lord trying to divert Paul and saying he was out of the will of God. That was solely the enemy trying to stop him. 
Mm -hmm. And what the Lord was just showing and revealing to me that we have to realize is that the enemy doesn't just stop after one incident. That's something you tell us quite often, Mm -hmm. Mama, that don't just be looking for the one event and think the devil is done. It's going to go away quietly. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. We see that throughout the scriptures and how there was always multiple attacks Mm -hmm. at around the same time. It wasn't just one attack and then you get a couple years and you get another attack. Mm -hmm. So that's something we have to be careful of in our own lives and just believe. We think that when we see the one attack, it's over and done and we let down our guard and we fall into other sin because we're no longer being vigilant or Mm -hmm. attentive to what the Lord Mm -hmm. is telling us to do and what he has for us. So we end up slipping into sin and that's something that we can and should be working against. Um, Dad, you often tell us that before we do something, you're saying weigh the cost. Um, is it worth it? Mommy you always say, think about it. Is it worth going to hell over this one little thing? And the answer is no. There's no, and that is, it's not even worth going no. over a big thing. There's nothing, Absolutely. nothing that validates going to hell. Makes it oh, burning in eternity with weeping and gnashing of teeth was worth it. <laughs> There's no, nothing. not for one second. Absolutely. Go ahead, sweetheart. And so we see that Paul had, and then after we transitioned from that point that there was repeated attacks, we see that Paul's faith was still up at this time. He didn't let his guard down now that they um, they had escaped safely to the island, but he kept his faith. Uh, the reason I say that is because we see in the Gospels, it says, no deadly thing shall harm you. This mm-hmm. is considered deadly. Mm-hmm. I think Jesus also referred to snakes specifically. He should take a, yeah, so let's, let's go over and look at that. But before we do, um, let's look at second Corinthians chapter two, verse 11, really quickly. It says, lest Satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. So even in this, um, in this chapter of second Corinthians, he was talking about them to get back on their love walk, pay attention, don't become slackful and, and be, be at the ready to continue in the walk of faith and the walk of love with Jesus Christ um, and how they treated each other so that Satan didn't even have a single opportunity to slip in there and create any diversion um, to their faith or deceive them um, and take advantage of them. And we know that the thief doesn't come for any other reason except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Promise you got that scripture or? I got it. Oh, you do? Okay. It's Mark 16. Verses 17 and 18. Jesus said very plainly, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Other versions say harm them. Mm -hmm. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. And next to my, in my Bible, next to this, I have written the word fact, F-A-C-T. Amen. This is a fact of our life in Christ Jesus, and we have to choose to walk in it. It is a fact that this will happen and these things will take place because we are covenant believers, because it said that this would follow those who believe. Not that we are seeking it out, wandering around playing Marco Polo, looking for it, but it will follow us because we believe in Jesus Christ and we carry his anointing. We carry his name. His blood is upon us and in us and for us. And he is doing the work. Well, and, and I believe it starts off with the key. These signs will follow. They will not precede. They will follow. What Jesus say? A wicked generation seeks or looks for a sign, mm-hmm. which means that would have to come first. Well, if that already came first, then what need is there of his servants to go forth being sent or mm-hmm. led by Holy Spirit to go do the works that he did? Mm-hmm. So this puts it in the, as, as Jesus always does, in the correct order. Mm-hmm. And they we, will follow us and, and mark, hey, yes, you're on the right track. Now keep going. Amen. And we bring Christ to the situation. Amen. Uh, we talked about this in the previous episode, um, in the, for the previous chapter, that Paul brought Christ to that. The Lord put him there so he could save those other people who, without an opportunity for the Lord to work, someone to open the door for him, they would have been lost because clearly they weren't listening to wise counsel or wisdom. Clearly they had no understanding of the things of God and they would have all perished. Not to mention the people that were on Malta, right, who would have just been suffering in their sickness and disease, but the Lord sent his body, right? We are Christ in the earth, 
not a replacement, but a continuation. We carry him into the situation. We bring Christ on the scene with what we just read, the full capacity of what Christ has to offer. He works through us as the Holy Spirit wills to bring about his good pleasure, his desire for change in the people's lives, change for their healing, change for their delivering, setting these people um, free who were held captive by sickness and disease and Satan right? And they were suffering. And the Lord didn't, I mean, he didn't even come preaching the gospel. He just showed up. Yes. And Christ in him did the work. So amen. Yes. Go ahead, sweetie. Um, and what the Lord will show me through this is that as you were saying, mommy, that with Paul and his faith, he had to maintain, it was the signs this followed after he was doing what the Lord wanted him to do and where he was bitten by the snake and nothing harmed him. And the Lord just reminded me of how the people reacted. They originally thought he was, he did some this devious is, acts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, said, they were mm-hmm. looking about to for get his it now. demise. Mm-hmm. They thought that the snake was sent by the Lord to condemn him because he had done some heinous crime against the Lord or against someone else. But then afterwards it says, when they looked at him for a long time, they changed their mindsets, mm-hmm. I would say, and they thought of him as a God. Well, let's, let's look at that for a second, right? Because, they went by natural appearances. So here was a man on a ship full of prisoners being guarded by military people, right? Roman military. That then face a shipwreck. Now they're on. No doubt he's still, if you will, in chains or whatever. Or he's still being guarded. He's still a prisoner, right? Yes. So they're going by what they see with their natural eyes. And what they hear with their natural ears. And then, yes, now this venomous snake jumps in and bites him. And he just shakes it off into the fire. All right? Mm -hmm. Which is also symbolic, if you will, of what happens with Satan at the end. Right? But they weren't looking at that. That wasn't the outcome they were looking for. They were looking to see the man perish because of what they thought through their own mind or their own, I'll say, vain imaginations. Not what was actually happening in the scene and in the in the situation, what the Lord was doing. Mm-hmm. And if I could um, just speak on that for a moment. Absolutely. There is an element to what they said that was right and accurate. Paul was a murderer. He was formerly a murderer. But here's something that we need to understand. We were all formerly something else, right? Formerly ungodly, formerly dead in our trespasses, formerly dead in our sins, right? Always contrary to God until we came to Christ Jesus. But once we come to him and we step into that relationship and that flow of his blood, we are new creations. We become something totally new. Now, Paul could have said, oh, finally caught up with me, devil. Oh, I held the clothes while they were killing Stephen. Oh, I was a sinner. He could have, he could have succumbed to that, but he said, hold up. (laughs) Wait a second. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. So what belongs to me now is what we read in Mark 16. So Mm -hmm. in the natural, who he was, they were pretty well on target with their, you know, their uh, calculations of customary responses. Absolutely. But there's something higher in play here, which is the supernatural, which says that dead, that, that murderer that you thought you saw is, is dead and gone. But this man here belongs to Christ. This man is a new creation. This man brings Christ on the scene. This man is in the perfect will of God. This man follows his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now he's riding in something higher and the wicked one touches him not. He has no right, no authority, no anything to touch Paul, no valid claim in the apostle Paul at this time. And the apostle Paul had to realize who he was and stay in the flow of the grace that was provided for him to finish the race and the grace that was provided for him to just live his life as a believer in Christ Jesus. He could have said, oh, the snake bit me and sat there watching it. But he knew He had a different promise, right? And just like the disciples, when um, they were in the boat and he said, go to the other side, he had a command. They had a command, right? And then the temptuous winds and the wave came up and they got scared. 
and cried out. And the Lord said, where's your faith? But he said, I've got a command. I know where I'm going. So this snake cannot possibly stop me. It cannot possibly hinder me because I've been told by my God that I'm going. And let's also look at that because as you said, that's that was each of us. We were all murderers. <laughs> True. That. What did Jesus say? If you have hate against your brother, mm-hmm. I was good at hating. You've already oh, absolutely <laughs> man had a master's degree <laughs> in unforgiveness, the PhD, and then so I have multiple. <laughs> yes, I understand. Doesn't make it any any more right, and I don't Mm-mm. condone that act, Absolutely those actions not. or behaviors. Absolutely not. I actually, condemn them in myself. Amen. Right, but let's recognize that we were all like that. What did Jesus say? If you have hate in your heart towards your brother, you've already committed murder in your heart. Mm-hmm. The deed was already done. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a different standard, different metric for Paul, right? But again, as we were saying, these people are all judging by the natural. Mm-hmm. Let's examine ourselves, though, in this. Not look, we absolutely shouldn't look for the downfall of another, but that they are built up and and. I'll say returned, restored, reconciled back to the, to, to Christ. What did Paul say in, in Romans 14, 4? Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands, or the Lord is able to make him stand. Right? Yes. Okay. Don't we see the Lord making him stand here? While everyone else was looking for his, his downfall, his death, the Lord clearly made him stand. And there's also the fulfillment of, I'll say, the promise for those that are being persecuted as a righteous man for the sake of the gospel. Do we not see that at play and at work here as well? We should. And the Lord's fulfilling his purpose, but also giving everyone on this island an opportunity to come into relationship with the Lord, that he would be their Lord and Savior, not Paul, Hmm. but the Lord would be their Lord and Savior as he desired to be from the whole time. Yes. From before the foundations of the earth were laid. It's a matter of what will they do with the opportunity, right? Yes. Yes. But we saw they received, but also why did they receive? the expectation that they had that Paul would drop dead never came to pass. So because Paul endured and by endured, I mean, just walked with the Lord in step with the Lord and and the Lord's perfect will. Others now came to that place where they were ready to believe and receive the Lord for themselves and, and the healings and the miracles so I bring that up because it should be an encouragement for us to continue to pursue the Lord with everything and to stay in step with Him yes. and to endure even when the enemy tries to shake us up or get us distracted or off the path. Amen. Um, back to Second Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse 14 says this, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Uh, Verse 15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? Um, I read through verse 16. I always do that. (laughs) But you see that being walked out here. He was the fragrance of Christ among these people. And once they figured out that he wasn't a murderer, but that God was with him, he smelled like life to them. And no, they couldn't put their finger on it and, you know, hold it correctly that he was of Jesus Christ and not a a idol that they were accustomed to, but they smelled the fragrance of life coming from him. And then they were able to be drawn closer in and, no, knowing God's character and his nature and the man that Paul was, I'm sure he shared Christ with them. But at the very least, they had their needs met. Yes, and Mo- Mommy Ashley also said with how Paul wasn't doubting what the Lord was doing, the Lord reminded me that he had enough faith to get to Rome and say to full health. Paul wasn't worrying that he'll, that 
and Paul didn't write Rome on his deathbed and about to di- <laughs> die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But he got there in the state that God wanted for him. Mm-hmm. And that, how that's also faith for us. We shouldn't be just expecting for faith or to be healed for a short amount of time and then after, in the long run, keel over, mm-hmm. we should have faith for everything that God has for us. Amen. And God is a quality God. He doesn't do halfway things. It's not rickety or rusty. When he puts something together, he does it right. So we should expect his best. Heaven is not being held together by uh, hot glue, bubble gum, and duct tape and a paper clip. It's not. <laughs> it is the finest material ever. Right. Amen. So we should yes. expect his best here and now in this life too. Amen. Promise. Amen. Yeah. He's always looking to establish us, but with his best, right? Isn't that exactly what happened here? Yes. They, uh, they perceived Paul a certain way, but then the Lord moves and works through him, through his servant. And then by the end, what are they doing? Receiving their own healing. Yes. They're receiving their own healing, but then they also honored Paul right? And provided all the things that were necessary. The Lord had established him. Paul didn't go try to find his own way or make his own way. He just let the Lord work through him. And the Lord established his servant. And he'll do the same with you. Amen. If you will let him. Amen. If amen. you will trust him to do that, he will do it for you, just as he did with Paul. And all the rest of the prophets. And literally everyone in scripture that would allow it. Yes. Amen. 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 All right, let's pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, promise. Lord, just thank you for today. Just thank you for giving us the ability to have faith inside of you, Lord. And just showing us how we do that, Lord, so that whenever we need it, Lord, that we can use and get exactly what she wants to have, Lord. And Lord, I ask just thank you for blessing us with your presence, Lord, and just giving us the ability to know that you're there, Lord, and that you'll answer us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' amen. almighty name we pray, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for a newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org, click on connect in the menu bar, and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.